That's been on. Can they have one in? Sorry. Okay, good afternoon everyone. Um, just to make you aware, Deli Ali is our player. He will follow after Jose. Um, it's a roaming mic situation today, so if you do have a question, please raise your hand. Um, that helps with simultaneous translation as well, because obviously there's no translator on the top table. So if you do have a question for Jose, please raise your hand and we'll get to you. Who'd like to take the first question? Yep, we'll go with Dan at the front. Thank you. Hi, Jose. Hello. You've obviously got a very rich history in, in the Champions League. Can you explain how you feel about this competition and how you feel Tottenham can do in this competition this year? I love the competition as much as, as everyone in football. It's something that uh, everybody dreams about uh, winning it. And uh, not everyone has the privilege to be a Champions League winner, which uh, I was happy enough to, to do it twice. Do I want to win it uh, for a third time? Of course, I would love it. But I know the difficulties of it. And in this moment, honestly, is not the moment to speak about it. It's the moment to qualify. Um, plenty of experience in the competition. I think is my game 148. Um, and I think one of the reasons why my teams were never out in the group phase was exactly because we always thought about the group phase and we never thought about what could happen after the group phase. Group phase. Six matches, in our case, two matches to, to qualify. And that needs to be our focus. We need to focus on, on these two matches. And uh, tomorrow is one that can give us the qualification. And we have to, to understand that it's not an easy match. Good opponent, good coach that I know well. Uh, we drew in, in Athens. That shows that there is not a big uh, decalage between the two teams. So, a difficult one for us, but hopefully we can get the result we need to qualify. Jose, your, your predecessor, Mauricio, s suggested that part of the reason for the team's struggles this season was a kind of hangover and come down from losing the Champions League final. In, in your short time here, have you picked up on that at all? Is that something you suspect might be the case? No, if Mauricio says that, he knows. Um, I think he's, if he tells that, it's based on experience that he lived here. And properly, he's also sharing a little bit of his own feelings. When you are almost landing on the moon and uh, you don't do it, I believe that the frustration is very, very high. But at the same time, you look to, to a team like... Um, like Liverpool, and they also had the frustration of not winning a final, and then the next season they reached the final for the second time, and they and they win the competition. So I think it depends a lot on on the people's uh, mentality and the way you you react to such a big uh, uh, disappointment. And I can imagine that to lose an European Cup final has to be a big disappointment. Okay, go to the moose. Jose, you were the last away manager to manage at White Hart Lane. I know you've been to the new stadium, but just give us an idea of how excited you are ahead of your first game as Spurs manager at the new ground, which is probably the best ground in the world. So you want to remember me that I lost that match? No, right? no, no, no. <laughs> Not again. Uh, no, no, I I'm just reminding you that you did manage at White Hart Lane, forget I know, I when know. it was. <laughs> I know. I played there many times, obviously as an opponent. I did it with uh, three different clubs. Um, I did it also in the Champions League. I won, I lost, I drew. I always loved it. Um, there are a few, a few stadiums where you always enjoy. Of course, you want to win, but you always enjoy the atmosphere. You always envy the support that your opponent in this case has 
And the, many times I played there, I felt envy of such a strong and passionate support. Um, I can imagine also because I've been there in, in um, as a as a football lover, but I've been in the new stadium to watch um, Spurs Newcastle, and uh, I felt it. And the game, of course, was not good for us; was a bad result. But I felt that the relation between the fans and the and the team and uh, the pride for that new home because in the end you always miss your old home but if you change for better or for much better you don't miss it so much and you embrace your new home so i think that's what happened with the fans i think they just love the team love the club love the stadium and i believe that uh that tomorrow can be can be the restart of that empathy between the supporters and and the team an empathy that with bad results you know you lose a little bit so let's hope that tomorrow can be can be the start of um of that empathy coming back with the players happiness and good feeling to play to play at home and to feel that uh, the supporters are playing with them and make them stronger. So hopefully tomorrow is a good start. We play two two home matches in in three days. I think if you can if you can make it good, win matches, play well, score goals, showing commitment, happiness, desire. I think could be a good a good period for us to to go back to that empathy between the players and, and the fans. You mentioned that empathy. The fans sang your name <coughs> at West Ham on Saturday after the victory. They've, they've taken you straight away. I didn't go there because I felt I shouldn't. I felt I, I, I wanted the players to be the guys and, and they are the guys. So I, I didn't want to go where the fans were, I just away from the outside. Obviously, is a good, is a good feeling. I want obviously to to thank, but again, uh, it's not about me. It's about the players, about the team. So if I could choose between another uh, Jose song and uh, players songs and Spurs songs, I would obviously go in that uh, in that direction. It's not about me. I am. I am like them. I'm outside the pitch. They want to help the team to to win, and they do it with uh, with um, their heart. I want to help the team to win with my passion and also with my knowledge and my experience. But everything is about the players. So I hope that that they they do that. I hope that they make the players feel that they are with them and and they want to win. And uh, as I was saying, three. Three important days for us with two matches that we should um, that we should win. So hopefully it goes well. Hi, Jose. Um, <coughs> Hello. Hi. Um, you spoke very warmly about Mauricio Pochettino. He speaks very warmly about you. Considers you a friend. Have you had any communication with him since you've taken over? I didn't because um, because I know what he's feeling. I've been there. And I know that there is a period where uh, the best thing for us sometimes is to to process our feelings, to process what happened with us, and then in a couple of weeks, depends, two, three weeks, I think then we are open again to the world, we are open again to embrace um, a different period in, in, in our life, so I, I want to respect that and to give that that feeling uh, to to him, but uh, I I spoke with his uh, son, which is um, a player in in our youth uh, categories, and um, I think through his boy he can understand my my feelings too, and of course I will call him, but uh, I want to let him process. I also told the players uh, to be the players in contact with him. Uh, to make him feel completely free to come here 
anytime he wants. If he wants to come for a training session, great. If he wants to come for a, a dinner in, in the lodge with the boys, perfect. If he wants me to be, I will. If he doesn't want me to be and he wants to be just with the boys, let's do that way. So I just want him to feel that this, this house belongs to him. Five and a half years in football now is is long, long time. So he must feel completely free to do what he wants to do in relation to the to the players and, and the staff and the club. With that in mind, would you probably wait for him to make the first move because he's the one? No, it's not about the first move or the second move. If he wants to come, he can come, not tonight, um, because the boys will not be here. But if he wants to come tomorrow, he can come tomorrow, he can come when he wants. If he decides not to not to come, which is something normal, and he meets the players outside, he meets the players in his house, he goes out with players for dinner, that's also perfectly fine. And I and I will I will contact him when I feel that that space, you know, I needed a, a little bit of space to process uh, things when I I left uh, previous clubs. It's not in in five or six days that you are again uh, open. You know, you take a little bit of time to process things, to understand, to you know, to think and rethink and uh, speak with the pillow. And uh, in a couple of weeks, you will be you will be fine. And and I will call him. Okay, question from Matt. Jose, I, I respect that your focus is on trying to qualify from the group first of all. But Maurizio last season said it would have been a miracle to win the Champions League with this club. Do you think it would take a miracle to win the Champions League with Tottenham? You know, sometimes uh, we use words. You know, sometimes we, we use words to try to describe things, but the words they don't reflect exactly what what it is. Um, I would change a miracle by very difficult. Um, I wouldn't use the word. Uh, Miracle, but probably I did it also a few times. Sometimes we, we, we do that. Um, I think obviously there are teams with a, a different culture of victory. Uh, there are clubs and and uh, and teams with a different uh, potential, with a different experience, with a different know-how. I think all of that at this level plays um, plays a role, but. Um, with these boys, I will never be afraid of any Champions League match that uh, that comes to to our to our faces. Uh, again, I repeat, we need to qualify. That's the focus. I always say that not even in the last 16, I used to think about winning. It's only when my teams arrive in quarterfinals where I start having the feeling that we can do it. Still far, but on quarterfinals last eight, I start thinking that um, that we have we have a chance. Uh, but in this moment, I think we are really really far from it. We have to we have to qualify. But as I was saying, give me time to work. Give me time to develop my ideas with with these boys, and I will I will have no problem at all to go to to any stadium to play against any. Any big opponent in in Europe or in England, and we are not going to be afraid of anyone. Okay, take a question right there. Yeah, sure. So um, I I know you said last week that you were very pleased with your squad, um, but since you have a rather strong connection to Slatan Ibrahimovic, who is currently on the market, is there any possibility of him joining Tottenham anytime soon? You are right about the connection. I would even say more than connection. Uh, I would say also passion, understanding. Uh, amazing player, amazing guy. But uh, but I would say no. I would say no chances. Uh, we have um, the best striker in England. We have uh, one of the top two, three strikers in in the world. Doesn't make any doesn't make any sense of um, a striker of Zlatan's uh, dimension. Obviously, on his late 30s, but still a striker that can play in in any club in the world. 
it doesn't make sense to come to a club where uh, we have hurricane. Okay, take a question from Tiago down here. Josh, if you pass the microphone. Thank you. Hello, uh, José Mourinho. We are live to, to Portugal. Just to say that a few moments ago, our president, uh, Marcelo Rebelo de Sousa, salutes you and gives you a, a very a big hug and told us that, to, that he admires you a lot. My Thank question uh, is about uh, Portuguese coaches. Yesterday, uh, Carlos Carvalhal uh, told that Portuguese coaches are almost the, the kings of the world because Mourinho is the king of Europe, two champions and two Europa League, no one before has won it. Uh, Manuel José, king of Africa, and now Jorge Jesus, the king of Americas. What are your opinion about this great achievement of Portuguese coaches and more recently about Jorge Jesus? Now that one thing is we, we cannot deny. So a Portuguese coach uh, was champion of Europe, a Portuguese coach was champion of Africa, a Portuguese coach was uh, an, an American or South American um, champion. So that is the reality. You know that I am really, really 100% Portuguese, but I don't like, I don't like that we are the best coaches, we are this. No, there are many good coaches uh, around the world. The quality is not about nationality. And I, I'm just really happy that we have good coaches and uh, at different levels we have um, good prestige and uh, with good things that we do, we open doors for uh, new generations, we open opportunities to other people and I know that in this moment there are so many Portuguese coaches around uh, uh, the world and that if I have any responsibility on that makes me, makes me really happy. In the case of, uh, of Jorge to, to win the the Copa Libertadores with uh, with Flamengo. I'm I'm happy for him and uh, and that's it. Okay, we're going to finish with Matt Ali, the gentleman at the back that wants a question. Then we've got a question from Sammy as well. Okay, that'll be the last four. Matt, do you want to go first down here? Thank um, you, Jose. Even the greatest actors in the world feel nervous ahead of a new show opening. I just wondered, are you feeling any butterflies ahead of your own home unveiling? And given this is a fresh start. How much could a triumphant first night go towards making the new stadium the sort of fortress that perhaps it hasn't yet become? I have a good record in that stadium. One match, one victory with the Inter Legends. <laughs> Where we had so much fun. <laughs> um, no, seriously, I'm not nervous. I'm never nervous. I always feel just a little desire of uh, the match should be tonight and not tomorrow. This waiting time is the thing that I don't like. I don't say nervous. I, too many matches, too much experience to, to feel that way. So no butterflies, nothing, nothing strange. But it's, it's good to start winning like we did in the last, uh, in the last match. If you can win at home the first game, obviously, is also important. Um, but I always say, uh, the first match of my career as a, as a head coach, I lost. And I couldn't imagine in that moment that my career would bring uh, as much uh, success. The two seasons where I won the travel, Porto and, uh, and Inter, I start with a draw and a draw at home. So two bad results and we won everything. But, you know, you want to, to be strong, you want to win matches. Our stadium is the best stadium in the world. Uh, probably other stadiums, they still have 10,000 more or 15,000 more spectators, but this is the best stadium in the world. Uh, I don't want to say the best fans in the world because if I say that, people will say immediately, oh, he's saying that because uh, he wants the Tottenham fans to, to love him immediately, so I'm not going to say that, but we have very, very strong uh, fans, great mentality, great support. They go to football matches and they, they try to enjoy, like they did against West Ham. I could understand perfectly that they enjoy the match. So, 
we are going to try to 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 have a good uh, a good result to qualify and as i was saying uh, part of our of our vision for the club uh, part of the club culture also and uh, that's always what we try to do we try to win we try to play well we try to to play good football to play attractive to play attacking like we did in the other day so many chances to score complete control of the game so that's what we are going to try. Let's see if Olympiacos, if they are good guys, and they let us do that. Okay, Ali, over here. Jose, uh, you said on Saturday that when it comes to Christian Eriksen, you need to know what's in his heart and his head about Tottenham. Have you spoken to him at all since then, or is it, this going to be a longer process? Yeah. yeah, I spoke with him. Obviously, I'm not going to. I'm not going to tell you our our conversation. Um, only me and him, we know what we spoke about. Uh, and Amazon, because I'm always connected with, <coughs> with the cables, so they, they also listen to everything I say, everything I do. Um, but uh, the important thing is uh, that he's, he's committed with us. So let's not talk about his future, let's not uh, talk about what is going to happen. Is he leaving? Is he staying? Um, let's talk about his commitment for the club and for the colleagues and for the project. And uh, and he's with us. Um, my decisions about start him, not starting him, select, not select, will be based on um, on the perspective of a future. I cannot hide that. Will be also based on the perspective of future. We have a present, and in football we have to focus on, on the present, in this case on, on tomorrow. But it's a club where you have to think about the future, and uh, these important decisions, obviously they have an influence on, um, on my decisions as a, as a head coach. But the important thing is that uh, a Christian staying or leaving is that kind of guy that easily I could understand, proper guy, Loves the club, loves the colleagues, uh, amazing colleague in in the dressing room. So it doesn't matter what is 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 one of us until the last day. Okay, two more. One from the gentleman at the back. If you raise your hand so we can see you, thank you. And then we'll finish with Sammy down here. Hello, I'm uh, from Greece. Um, first of all, uh, it's nice to have you back. Thank you. For uh, Greeks, I speak from uh, <laughs> Greek side uh, in football grounds inside. Uh, it's the first time you're playing against Olympiacos, so obviously you didn't have a lot of time to uh, study about the team, to learn about the team. Uh, the question is, uh, what, diffic what difficulties uh, you expect uh, tomorrow to face uh, against, if, it, if there is any player that uh, needs, uh, wants special attention from you, and especially against uh, your compatriot uh, Pedro Martins? Yeah, I didn't... Uh I did Olympiacos in 148 matches in the Champions League and a few more in the Europa League. Never Olympiacos, but Greek teams, yes. I played uh, Panathinaikos a few, a few times. Never Olympiacos. In this moment, uh, we have quite a history of Portuguese coaches in, in your country. You know, not just national team, but also some... Some good friends of mine, Pezero, Fernando Santos, uh, all of them there, and now, and now probably in these two top clubs, Olympiacos, Pauk, two other Portuguese guys. So I follow, um, I follow, but of course I was not close to imagine that I was going to play against Olympiacos, so I didn't watch it with a big focus. Um, last season I saw them playing against Balni. I was in the stadium. Um, they were already with Pedro, so the philosophy, the vision, the way to play is already there. And obviously we did uh, the, home, the homework. We have a fantastic staff here, not just the assistants I brought, but also a nice structure that the club has uh, in place on, on, on analyze and, uh, and IT people available to, to adapt to my way of, of work. So we did our... We did our homework. I, I respect Olympiacos as a team uh, more than to focus on on a player. It would be easier and probably nice for me to, to, to tell a few names, especially the Portuguese boys. It would be nice for them. 
I don't do that. I, I focus on on the players, globally, team, result. We drew. We didn't win. Was was not an easy match for us in in uh, in Athens. So I'm not expecting an easy game too. But um, we want to play well. We want to play well, and uh, we did it for 65 minutes against West Ham and away of home. So hopefully tomorrow we can extend that period of time even longer. And again, with uh, with such a, a strong support behind, we we must do it tomorrow. I think that's the way we have to think. We have to forget that we have a second chance in Munich. We have to forget that there is a second match and this one is not the, the match point, but we have to play like it is the match point. We have to get the result tomorrow. OK, Sammy with the last one just here. Jose, just from the outside looking in, looking in last season, what were your refle reflections on the club's run to the Champions League, Champions League final? And now you've had some time to work with the players. Do you feel any differently about about that run? Did you think that maybe that they overachieved last season, but now you've worked with them, you you can see how they managed to get to the final? I think... Um Champions League and every knockout competition, there are details that are responsible sometimes for your success or your failure, if you want to call it a failure. The reality is that we start um, this competition uh, with uh, 32 teams in the group phase. So if you want to speak about failure and, and success, is success for one and 31 uh, failure uh, that's a pragmatic but not a, a fair way to, to, to say it. Details make the difference uh, how many times I, I, I won in the last minute, how many times I lost in penalties, how many times details make the difference historically, so details sometimes make the difference and uh, a team does something magnificent when everything is, is, is going on this side and sometimes you don't do it when you have an incredible potential to, uh, to do it. Uh, in my case, for example, the season where uh, I lost uh, semi-finals on penalties with, uh, with Real Madrid, I think that was the strongest Real Madrid of the past 15 or 20 years. We won the league with uh, 100 points we won the league with 126 goals. We won the league against the best Barcelona in their history. We we did an amazing run in the Champions League. We go to the semi-finals. We lose on penalties in uh, a penalty shootout where uh, three of the best penalty takers in the world, Kaká, Ramos and Ronaldo, they all miss. Uh, we were the best team. We were the best team. We didn't win it. So sometimes... Details make a difference. In case of, uh, of Spurs last season, just the fact to, to reach the final is an amazing achievement. No doubt that is an amazing achievement. They had little details that were with, with, with them. You know, the, the VAR, of course, was a good decision. But the VAR decision against uh, City, of course they fought for it. But the Lucas uh, goal in, uh, in Amsterdam, they had these little details that um, were side to side with them. But it doesn't matter what, uh, to arrive in, in the final is, um, is an incredible uh, achievement, but is not history. History is win. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Delhi will be in shortly. Thank you. Thank you. See my friends.